Hey guys, Nick with Armory Survival here, and we've been getting a lot of calls from customers and other people interested in the new Energy Kodiak K2 saying, hey, what are the differences on this? When's it going to be out? Things like that. So I want to make a quick video here to explain to you guys and tell you some of the new differences, some of the upgrades, some of the things to look out for, and we'll discuss the panel options as well. So stay tuned to the end of the video. We've got some special offers and some giveaways to talk about. Let's get to it. Alright, so let's talk about what's not going to change between the original Kodiak and the K2. It's going to still have the same 1100 watt hour lithium ion battery on the inside as this guy does here. The same sine wave inverter, pure sine wave inverter, capable of up to 3000 uh, watt starting surge and then 1500 watts continuous. So that means you can run coffee pots, you can run your TVs, you can run your CPAP machines, uh, electric blankets, recharge cell phones, laptops, all that good stuff, no problem. Still going to have the same outputs on uh, the front here, except for they're going to have some new USB-Cs and some Qualcomm's over here, which I'll talk about in just a second, uh, and a different switch. So really, those things are all going to stay the same. Now, let's talk about what the upgrades are going to be on this guy here. First, you're going to see there's a new battery management system, and they're saying that's going to just provide some more consistent power output uh, from the AC and DC when it's coming into the unit there, coming out of the unit. Uh, the new K2 is going to have an MPPT charge controller, which the original had a PWM, so the new one's just going to have a, a more efficient charge controller, which is going to help charge faster and improve the efficiency. For example, on the original Kodiak, uh, it could take up to 600 watts, so one, uh, or I'm sorry, six 100 watt solar panels would be hooked up to it, and it would charge the Kodiak from zero to 100% about three to four hours. The K2, you're only going to need five 100 watt panels, so that'll be the max you can hook up on the new K2 is five 100 watt panels. It'll, it'll charge the same uh, 0 to 100% in about the same 3 to 4 hours. So one less panel, it just charges a little more efficiently. Uh, LCD screen upgrade, it's going to read the charge input. This is a really cool one as well. I'll explain this one a little bit more here in a minute as well and show you. Uh, USB-C charge ports, it's going to be two of them, and USB Qualcomm 3.0 ports. So that's going to, kind of like your quick chargers that you use for your cell phone, is going to do the same thing. So right down here on this guy, you're going to have two USB-Cs on the bottom that you can, uh, most newer devices are using that, and then the other ones are going to be the Qualcomm's uh, fast charge in there. Uh, here's a big one that a lot of people asked about, lithium compatible expansion. Original Kodiak, you could only use 12-volt uh, deep cycle lead acid or AGM batteries. The K2, you're going to be able to use lithium. Uh, Energy is coming out with a battery pack we heard. We don't have any specs, we don't have any details on it yet, but as soon as we find out, we'll let you know. But it sounds like you can just get those, hook them up, and the good thing about the lithium is you can discharge them to a lower rate without damaging the batteries than you can with the deep cycle lead acid or AGM. So that's a really cool one there. Uh, it's going to have a three position power switch, access power more efficiently. So with the original Kodiak, if you're on off switch, it's either on, it's off. And the only thing that would work when it's off is these 12 volt plugs or the 12 volt uh, sockets here. Which, you know, to me is not a big deal because if I want to charge my phone, I'd have an adapter, I'd plug it in. It works just fine. But the new one's going to have a three position switch. So you can have it off, you can have it on to where everything's on, or you can have the third position where uh, the sine wave inverter and the AC is off, but you're running all your USB ports and your 12 volt ports on DC, which is cool because now you can charge your phones and use those USB ports without the inverter being on and taking up more power. Uh, they're going to have a new charge input. They're going to use EC8. They're saying it's going to help charge the K2 more efficiently. And the, one of the last ones is it no longer needs resets, which if you had the, the original K1 or you've heard about it, when it gets down to about 18 or 20 percent, it goes into a safety shutdown mode so it doesn't damage that battery. You'd have to use the wall charger, plug it into the front here, plug it into the wall, hit the power button, start it over. Uh, it kind of confused some people until they learn how to do it. Not a really big deal, but, you know, if you don't know how to do it, you don't know how to do it. The new one, from what they're saying, is going to have a switch or a button or something on the outside that will automatically reset it. Obviously, I don't have my hands on the K2 yet, but I will here soon, and I'll be able to tell you exactly how you do that. But it sounds like it'll be like a circuit breaker type thing where you can just reset it, so it should be pretty super simple. Those are the main upgrades or the main differences between the original Kodiak and the K2. All right, let's talk solar panel choices on the new K2. Can't wait to get my hands on one of these guys. So. Energy Solar is only going to support the panels that they 
the manufacturer and provide with the new K2. Reasoning behind that is, on the original Kodiak, a lot of people were hooking up solar panels incorrectly and causing damage to that charge controller, and it was having to get replaced, it just turned into a nightmare. So from what I understand, if you are able to make your own adapter do something, you can use other solar panels, but it more than likely will void your warranty. So we're just going to talk about the two panels that Energy Solar makes for these with the EC8 connections. The first one is the Solar Storm 100, right up here. The second one is the Lynx, right up here. They're both 100 watt panels. The big difference is the Solar Storm is a polycrystalline panel in a, a rigid steel frame. They weigh about 16 and a half pounds. The Lynx is a monocrystalline panel, still 100 watts, and it can bend up to about 30 degrees in each direction, and it weighs 8 pounds, so a lot less weight. We get lots of questions about, hey, which panel should we buy? Which ones should we use? And what I tell everybody is this. If you're going to mount your pa panels in a, uh, I'm sorry, a permanent or semi-permanent place, like on top of your roof, on top of a barn, on top of a vehicle or an RV or something, I would go with the solar storm panels because they are a little more robust. They're in that steel frame, uh, polycrystalline panels again. The Lynx panels are awesome. I haven't I've actually seen these, of course, but they're pretty much the same as most flexible panels. Like I said, they can flex about 30 degrees each way. They're on a plastic backing. They only weigh eight pounds. Those are good if you want to keep your system light and portable. You want to move it around. You're not going to be having your panels out all the time, um, camping, RVing, stuff like that. The big thing with the flexible panels is if they're gonna be outside, make sure they're secured down because if the wind catches them, boom, those things are gonna go flying. Ask me how I know. So they have grommets on them. Uh, I use bungee cords on mine. Um, I've set them on the ground and put rocks on the corners, on the plastic, not on the cells, just on the plastic. I've gone as far as using duct tape. So as long as those plastic ones, or the, I'm sorry, the links, the flexible ones are secured down, you'll, you'll be good to go. So that's really it. It's gonna depend on your application, how you're gonna use them the most and what you wanna get out of the system. All right, now that we talked about panels, let's jump back to the K2 and look at some of the new features real quick on this thing and that new screen. So, as you see over here, we have the new K2. So this is some of the things. Smarter display with a charge input. They're going to have this little battery here. It's going to have five lines. Each line represents 20% of your charge power. Here you have the new switch, like I said, that three position, three position switch, so it can be on. Uh, complete, everything's on, completely off, or you just have your DC stuff on. It's going to have 30% more efficient solar charging with that MPPT charge controller. Again, down here is the USB-Cs. Here's the USB-Cs on the bottom and with a quick charge. And on the side, like the original Kodiak, it's going to have these same uh, ports here to hook up your batteries, but they're lithium expansion capable. The new screen here so this is cool battery voltage going to show you that looking at this here it looks like it's just going to be a much simpler easier to understand screen than the original kodiak I, I love the original kodiak still don't get me wrong some of the stuff even for me i'm like ah, i don't need to know that but this looks like it's going to be pretty simple uh, again battery level indicator uh, you have your state of charge as a percentage so right up here you can see it's discharging 81 percent and it's going to show your net effect of combined input and output so if it shows ds that's your net discharge or your CH, your net charge. And the last one, the big one, input, output, reading, combined effect if both are happening at once. So right up here, it's gonna show you. Uh, the original Kodiak wouldn't show you how much power was coming into your panels, just how much you were pushing out of the unit. This is gonna show you both. So for example, if you don't have any solar panels hooked up and you plug something in that's pulling 100 watts, it's gonna show you that you're pulling out 100 watts. If you plug in your solar panels, let's say you, you're pulling 300 watts uh, you're pushing 300 watts from your panels into the Kodiak and you're pulling 100 out from your whatever you have hooked up, this is going to show you that you have 200 watts going in to charge your batteries. So that's a really cool feature which will help you to understand how much power you're producing. It'll help you to position your panels better because just the slightest angle or the slightest change in panel position can give you a ton more efficiency. Uh, and it's just going to let you know how much longer you have till you get that thing charged up. And we just got our what they call the hero shot over here with the new graphics. Looks like a pretty cool unit to me. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for the new stuff on the K2. Uh, the Energy Solar is going to start shipping these the beginning of May. So right now they have a pre-sale event going on, which is going to save you a little bit of cash and get your place in line so that your units will ship sooner rather than later once they start shipping in the beginning of May. Uh, over here at Armory Survival, we are an authorized energy distributor, so we offer price match guarantee. Right now, if you head over to our site, armorysurvival.com, 
you will see, for example, the Kodiak solar generator is on pre-sale right now for $1,299.99. Once this pre-sale is over, it's going to go up to this bigger price, almost $1,600. Uh, if you hover over here, you can click on solar generator kits, and it's going to show you all the different options for the different panels like we discussed. Uh, also want to show you, we do a bunch of giveaways over here. Right now, if you go to our Facebook page, you're going to see this one here. It expires February 17th, so if you're watching before that, make sure you go over to Armory, uh, I'm sorry, Facebook.com forward slash Armory Survival. Like us so you can see all our new contests. But right now, we're giving away a 30-day food supply from Augustin Farms and a Lifesaver water filtration jug, about a $215 value. Different ways to sign up, just click and look around there. Make sure you like the page, too, so you can see our future giveaways. And last here... For this video here, we have these Earth Pack dry bags. These things are pretty cool. 20 liter dry bags. They come with, let's see if we can see here, a cell phone case in here. Most smartphones can fit in. So what these are great for is hiking, camping. You can put stuff in here. It stays completely dry. If you're a rafter, or a canoer, a boater, anything like that, you can put things in here. It can drop it in the water. It stays completely dry. So if you've been watching this video to the end here, go over to our site, find the K2 page, and look around. There's going to be something that says YouTube, and then it's going to have a code behind it. If you find that, uh, go to add any item to your cart. doesn't matter what it is. You just have to have something in the cart. You'll see a coupon code box. Put that code in that coupon box, and it's going to add one of these to, you, to your thing for free. Just delete the other item in there, and we're going to send... we got four of these here, blacks and yellows, four of them total that we're going to send out. So put that in there. If you're one of the first four to do that, only in the United States, sorry, everybody everywhere else, U.S. only, we'll send one of these to you for free. No freight. Just drop it in the mail to you. Uh, if the code's not there anymore, it's gone. Sorry. But make sure you subscribe to our channel because all the videos we do, we're going to do little giveaways. Uh, check us out on our social media. And if you need any help or you have any questions on the K2 or even the original Kodiak, drop us an email, give us a call. We would be happy to help. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.